Hey everybody, I'm Mike Levy. We're here up on the top of Cypress Mountain this morning, high above Vancouver. And this trout colored bike next to me is Giant's all new TransX Advanced Pro Zero. <music> It has 135 millimeters of rear wheel travel, 150 millimeter fork, and adjustable geometry. Now, Giant also says that it's one trail bike to do it all. We're gonna test that claim in an upcoming field test review video, but for now, let's zoom in and take a closer look at the TransX. The Advanced Pro Zero part of the name, well, that means that this bike, it's the top tier model, and it has Fox's live valve suspension on it. It'll cost you $8,500, but you don't need to spend that much to get a carbon trance. They start off at $4,300 or $5,400 for the middle model. If carbon's not your thing, $2,300 is where the aluminum bikes start at. They have the same geometry and they sport the same geometry adjustment chip in the rocker link that we're gonna take a closer look at in a minute. The Trance name has been around since way back in 2005, and it's grown in both travel and wheel size during the last 16 years. This new version is carbon fiber from tip to tail, including a carbon forged rocker link that Giant says helps to save a little weight. Now, speaking of weight, the frame weighs 2,100 grams claimed. That's about 600 grams less than the aluminum version. The carbon frame is also made in Giant's own factory, where they make their own bikes, as well as a whole bunch of other people's, but don't tell anybody. Overdrive, Mega Drive, Power Core. Is any of that usable? <laughs> Overdrive, Mega Drive, and Power Core. Like most companies, Giant has a whole bunch of impressive sounding words to describe some of the Trans X's features. Let's start with overdrive, which is really just a tapered head tube with one and a half inch lower bearings that will fit any standard tapered fork. Mega Drive is also about large tubes, but this time we're talking about the down tube and seat tube area, and those are bigger, obviously, to make things stiffer. Now, there's also power core. Now that refers to the 92 millimeter wide bottom bracket. Everything is nice and wide and stiff. Other frame details include a whole bunch of well thought out protection. It should keep any scratches and noise to a minimum tabs around the bottom bracket shell for a chain guide, room for a 2.5 inch wide rear tire, internal routing, and of course, there's enough room inside the front triangle for you to fit that two liter of Mountain Dew that you're gonna bring with you on your ride. Okay, let's talk suspension, and I bet you know the story here. Maestro suspension on the back of the Trans X. Now that's a dual link co-rotating system that delivers 135 millimeters of travel. Both of those links, they rotate clockwise. That's also about 20 millimeters more travel than the non-X trance, the regular trance. There's also something to note here, adjustable geometry via a flip chip. Now Giant has pretty much never offered adjustable geometry on one of their production bikes, but it's worth noting that their prototype World Cup downhill bike has used it for a few seasons now. So adjustable geometry usually offers a pretty small range of adjustment. I've complained about that before. I don't want my head angle to change by 0.2 degrees and my bottom bracket to change by a couple of millimeters. I want it to be a noticeable difference. Well, Giant's done exactly that. You flip that flip chip around and it changes the head angle by 0.7 degrees. So three quarters of a degree. It also changes the bottom bracket height by 10 millimeters. Some other suspension details, the upper shock mount is trunnion, as are most of these days, and the lower shock mount is actually a co-pivot. It shares duties with the shock mount and the lower link's forward pivot, so you save weight by not having to have another pivot axle. Now basically, Live Valve is sort of computer control suspension system. It uses an accelerometer on the front and back of the bike to measure impacts and the velocity and adjust the compression damping accordingly. There's a microprocessor that figures all this out so you don't have to think about it. And the idea is that you could just ride your bike up the hill, down the hill, along flat ground, and you never have to flick any switches or levers to get the bike to work its best. Fox says that the whole system can respond in around three milliseconds, and that's about 100 times faster than you could blink. So again, the whole idea here you don't have to think about anything, you could just ride the bike. Onto the geometry. I'm five foot 10 and this is a large size Transex with a 484 millimeter reach in the lower setting. If you raise the geometry, it stretches out to 496 millimeters. The effective top tube length, 629 millimeters. We already talked about those head angles. The steepest setting is 66.2. You can slacken it out to 65.5 if you're heading down some steep stuff. 
I suspect that's where everybody is gonna put it and leave it. Seat angles, either 77.2 or 77.9 degrees. And again, that bottom bracket drop, the lowest setting, 40 millimeters of bottom bracket drop, you raise it up a little bit, you get 30 millimeters of drop. It's also nice to see a reasonably short 465 millimeter seat tube length on this large. There's a whole bunch of newish bikes out there where the seat tubes are way too long and that keeps you from running a longer dropper seat post. All right, so that is it for Giant's all new Trans X Advanced Pro 290. I'm pretty sure I got the name right. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. That way you'll see all the upcoming field test reviews, including the one we do on this brand new bike. I'm gonna put some pedals on it, go for a ride.